Hey guys, I'm Alex from the Mega Cell Charger Project. In this video, I, I want to do a comparison between regular chargers and uh, tell you about the reason why I actually started working on this project last year. So there were some people asking me why should they bother to get a Mega Cell Charger instead of uh, like a Lito Kala, which is four times cheaper than a Mega Cell Charger. So I want to clarify that, uh, tell who should look into the Mega Cell Charger and who should stick with uh, um, the regular solutions from my perspective. Everyone is free to do whatever they want, but uh, I just want to uh, give you more insight on on the reason why I actually started working on, on this project because I don't actually like working on things that other did. So yeah, let's get into it. This is the cover I've made to try to express this battle around and let's see who will win. All right, so we have Opus B3100 which is pretty popular. I actually got it um, uh, when I started working on a battery pack project and um, started using it. It's working good. It's cr giving uh, proper results. And then we have Lito Kala Li500. I also got one of those because uh, I wanted to see how it works if it has any differences uh, from the Opus, and there are a few differences. <coughs> I will tell you a bit more uh, after we finish this review. And we have Zanflare C4. I don't own this, but I watched a few reviews online, and uh, people reviewing it, including Jehu, said that uh, it's all right, but uh, the others two will beat it. And uh, yeah, let's go and see what's, what's up. We have the number of slots. On the first three, you have four slots. On the Mega Cell Charger, I opted for 16 slots. So you have four times the capacity of the other. And when you calculate the price, you can keep that in mind uh, because it's it's not four times more expensive for no reason. There are four times more parts uh, in the first place, and the second thing is that with limited uh, production, we are unable to um, get the budget for creating ASIC chips, uh, which first three will have to keep the cost low. Uh, so we need. Um, current measuring chips, we need voltage measurement, uh, we need um, devices to switch the channels uh, that we want to read the voltage and stuff like this, and that adds to the cost. Indeed, if we would have had the budget uh, that those guys have uh, for production, Mega Cell Charger could have been done much, much uh, cheaper, maybe, I don't know, twice as cheap as uh, it is right now but we don't have that and uh, I'm not sure if this kind of testing is um, this kind of tester will actually uh, get that much attention because the first the first four are for multiple types of batteries uh, you can also use it as regular daily charger and uh, yeah, it, it, it has more appeal to more people. And we build Mega Cell Charger for those uh, veterans that are going to build their own power banks for e-bikes, power walls, and stuff like this. So our niche is a bit smaller and more concise. So that's why you will see uh, a few of the things that I opted for are very laser targeted and it's not for everyone. <coughs> so we have max cell discharge. Opus has active cooling. It has a small fan on the back. 
and it allows discharging with up to 1000 milliamp hours per cell. Lito Kala and the Zam flare will discharge with up to 500 uh, milliamps, so twice slower if you're going to run through hundreds of cells. Imagine that you'll you'll have actually eight times less devices than the mega cell charger because you will need eight times more chargers to do the same capacity because it's doing with 500 milliamps and you cannot change that. The mega cell charger can do it with 1000 milliamp hours for each cell and for those who need it who need a custom uh, discharge it can go up to 3.2 amps on the discharge. I would not go to 3.2 but 2 amps we tested and it's stable and uh, we'll have that uh, in future versions because it's, it's changing just some resistors on the back ch changing their values and the uh, charger will, will uh, discharge with 2 amps and that's that's the nice thing uh, of the design we picked and the fact that we are using regular components, no ASIC chips and stuff like this. It can be customized pretty easy if you know what you're doing. For the connectivity, there's no connectivity and uh, we opted for wireless connection to the local network and uh, the Megacell charger can become an access point or it can connect to a router so you can have multiple chargers connected uh, in your network so you control it from one PC. That was mandatory from my point of view when doing hundreds of cells uh, because it's not just that you need to go on each of these chargers, place the cells in, push the buttons to start, push it three or four times so it starts charging. It's also connect, collecting the data from these devices. So you need to collect the internal resistance. You need to know how many milliamp hours uh, those cells um, discharged, uh, for how much time it, it charged or discharged, what's the temperature for each cell that it charged. And you need all this data to store it somewhere and people were writing it in Excel, going to each cell, writing it in Excel or writing it on paper then going to Excel and that's wasted time from my perspective. I don't think anyone enjoys uh, doing stuff like this so this is the reason we opted to um, connect it to a computer, pull the data automatically and uh, push it to a database for later use. <coughs> All right, active cooling, Opus has it, our uh, charger also has it. We're using two 50 millimeter fans on the back and that manages to keep it really cool. We don't have any problems with that. Smart algorithms, we implemented in the software ways to tell which cell is actually good or bad uh, within the first 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, we're going to push some electricity into the cell and see if it keeps the voltage. If it starts dropping uh, massively, then that cell is shorted and uh, it should be discarded and you should not wait eight hours to, to tell that. Otherwise, if you, push it, if you put it on a, a regular charger, it will stay there, it will get hot and you will see at the end, okay, it, it didn't do anything. It's, it's still at two volts or whatever. So that's what the smart algorithms we implemented will do for you. will save a lot of time and um, will save you from headaches and liabilities when using uh, bad cells to, to test. Custom cycling workflow. That's something uh, you get with the software because you have access to the charger and then you have the, um, the control to do whatever you like with it in what sequence you like and stuff like this so uh, to give you some example of the custom cycling workflow I got 
Tom Ammerman from Battery Hookup uh, who asked me if it's possible to charge the cell, discharge it, charge it again and do this cycle multiple times uh, to make sure that the cell is recovered and uh, to make sure the reading uh, milliamps are the right ones and it's, it's a good cell to sell to people. That's a trick one, good cell to sell. All right, it's a good battery to, to put on the website and ask for money. Yeah. So doing this, there was another uh, uh, thing that Tom asked for. Uh, after, the after the capacity is measured, the battery should be charged up to a certain level, like 3.7 volts. So it can, uh, it can comply with the newest DOT and YATA regulations because there, there are some changes in transportation of lithium. They must be charged like 30% or something like that. So that's something you cannot do with the other chargers. I actually tried hacking into the chargers, into Opus and Litocala before building the Megacell charger. Let me see if I have, yeah. So, as I was saying, I actually tried to hack into the Litocala and we got in up to a certain point. <coughs> When the software got quite complex in order to read what was written on the display, what we did, and it's, it's working if you're willing to decipher all the lines that are going on the display and try to read what's going on. So we're trying to connect the ESP device to this unit and read what's written on the display to push the dat data into a database and yeah if if we are going to get more people asking for this kind of hack we are going to finish it and uh, we'll make it open source it's not too difficult it's just work to to make it happen so like I said in the connectivity and the custom cycling workflow it's it's hard to work with the regular devices. Okay, the next one is multiple devices control software. From the Megacell monitor app, we're going to control all the charges available on the network. We can read the data, we can send commands and uh, print labels automatically from, uh, from that software. So it's pretty cool. Like I was saying, most of these features that you will not see on the, the other chargers are made specifically <coughs> like I was saying most of the features that you will not see on the other chargers uh, are made specifically as I was saying most of the features that you will not see on the other chargers are made specifically for those who are going to um, uh, test hundreds of batteries or even thousands uh, and that's a huge time saver if you multiply how much it will take you to read all the data write it down and if you have a few thousand cells per day that you want to do that that's a lot of wasted money and then the price doesn't even matter because you're paying someone much more to do that or you're wasting your own time and you're not doing something, uh, you're not doing more sales or do something you love instead of writing things down. Working temp sensors, that's with a star because the other chargers also have temp sensors, but those are hidden uh, beneath the plastic case. So in order to hit those sensors, you'll have to melt the plastic case most of the time like and you don't have individual control on those sensors because if if you hit the plastic so much that it had to uh, transfer it through the plastic uh, on the PCB then the, the whole case is 
hit it at that point, and you, you will not know which battery hit, um, produced that hit and stuff like this. So our uh, option was to put the sensor right beneath the battery. You'll see the PCB underneath, and you'll have the sensor, and you'll you push the battery on the temperature sensor, getting a, a valid read from that. And that temperature sensor for each cell allows us to stop a process in case the um, uh, heat goes over the set threshold. All right, so the final one is the price. Opus, I saw it at uh, almost $50 on Amazon. All the prices are from Amazon. Uh, Lee Tokala, it's as, at 30 bucks. And you have Zanflare a little over 30 bucks or 33 bucks. And you have the Megacell charger at $137. And that's without the power supply. We offer this option because most of you will have a, an old computer power supply. It, it works on 5 volts. So if you have a working power supply that you can pull from a computer, you will have the power supply for this charger. It requires more than 16 amps. So that's an option. If you want a power supply as well, that will be an extra 30, uh, 20 bucks, and that's uh, 157. And it's still cheaper than the Opus, like buying uh, four Opus chargers. You have 200 bucks almost owning four Opus chargers versus uh, 157 bucks, and all in one package. You, you, you won't have to run multiple cables and you control it from your computer. So again, for those who are going to ask me in the future why they should not buy um, a lower priced charger, I'm going to give you this video and hopefully it will answer your question. Thank you very much for watching guys and if you found this useful and you think the Megacell charger is a good match for your project, uh, go visit megacellcharger.com. We're running a crowdfunding campaign right now. The project is built. We're just trying to gather the orders to push it to the factory so we get a good deal to make the um, plastic injection molding required to do the case and to iron out all the issues with testing, packing and shipping it from, um, from the factory directly so we don't do proxy shipping, send it to us, mount the cases and stuff like this. So at this point we're not at the stage that we need funds to develop it. We need the funds to produce it. And yeah, let me know if, let me know if you have any questions. I'm sorry for my voice. I, I've been cold for a two weeks right now. I'm on pills trying to get better to, to push further this. But yeah, I, I, I was trying to make you understand what's, what's the purpose of this project and uh, <laughs> Hope you'll find it useful. Have a great day and thanks for watching. Alex.